Citizens around the island remain alert as Typhoon Chami makes landfall here in Taiwan. Hualien Ziji Hospital's Community Health Check Program gives residents early diagnosis of their illnesses. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Taiwan, in preparation of the then-coming Typhoon Chami, the city foundation in Hualien sets up a disaster response coordination headquarters to offer necessary assistance to all city units and volunteers around the island. As well, Kaohsiung City volunteers visited care recipients with relief items and made sure they are prepared for the storm. As the Central Weather Bureau officially broadcasts the coming of Typhoon Chami, Kaohsiung Tsuji volunteers arrived at care recipients' homes with aid supplies and caring words. Tsuji volunteers are more caring than my own children. They come to visit me every month. Worrying about the solitary seniors in their community, city volunteers visit each household to check on the state of their preparation ahead of the typhoon, helping them get through the storm free from harm and damage. As the typhoon hits, it normally causes flooding around this neighborhood because this is a low-lying area. We bring food to the care recipients so they don't need to go out to purchase food. This way, they will be more settled in their hearts. Though heavy rainfall has not been seen in Kaohsiung, local residents should not overlook the potential threat of the typhoon and should still carry out disaster prevention in advance. <laughs> Meanwhile in Hualien, Tsuji College of Technology and Tsuji University are making their final preparations in the face of the upcoming typhoon as workers get busy reinforcing the structures of the buildings to avoid potential damage. We are concerned that the upcoming typhoon may damage the ongoing construction work. Since the construction work cannot be complete overnight, we ask the workers to strengthen the structure of the building prior to the storm. As the Central Weather Bureau announced the arrival of Typhoon Chami, the Tsuji Foundation set up the Disaster Response Coordination Headquarters at Jingsi Abode, from where they can provide typhoon information updates and coordinate with Tsuji volunteers all over Taiwan. At the Disaster Response Coordination Headquarters, Tsuji brothers and sisters work together to ensure that everyone gets through the storm safely. Meanwhile, volunteers at the Hualien Jingsi Hall also carried out disaster prevention work in hopes of helping everyone weather the typhoon in safety and peace. After leaving a trail of destruction in the Philippines, Typhoon Utar hit China's Guangdong province and flooded many cities and counties. Though many city volunteers also experienced floodings in their homes, however, all rep were reported to be safe and sound. Beginning on August 20th, volunteers traveled to the worst hit areas to carry out disaster surveys. Typhoon Utar, along with its southwest monsoon, have caused the worst damage in 60 years along the coastline of China's Guangdong province. While Puning City volunteers were on a home visit, media volunteers captured the footage of the typhoon. The torrential rainfall accumulated over the past few days has caused water to overflow from the dikes around the region. Local volunteers and residents all experienced flooding, and in some areas, the water even reached two meters high. Residents who were evacuated could only seek temporary shelter in hotels. This time what's different is that since it started raining on the 17th, the next morning on the 18th, the water was already nearly a meter high in Shixia. We suggested everyone put their home appliances on higher ground or even the second floor if possible. Yesterday when we wanted to go home, we couldn't because there were traffic restrictions everywhere. So we came back to Chaoyang to stay in a hotel. Luckily, local volunteers made it through the storm safely and began carrying out a disaster survey on August 20th. The areas that they might need our help would be relief items or human resources and cleaning-wise, they will have to wait till the water subsides. Now Brother Yang and Brother Jiang are in Punin. There are about seven to eight of them who went to the worst hit areas to conduct a disaster survey and find out what resources are needed. Then we will be able to report the findings and mobilize Xiamen City volunteers. In other areas of Guangdong, city volunteers are on standby to provide any needed assistance and carry out relief work as soon as possible. 
Moving back to Taiwan, more than 300 recycling volunteers from 12 countries around the globe recently arrived in Taiwan to attend a recycling coordinator training seminar which took place from August 16th. Volunteers were all inspired by what they saw and vowed to take what they have learned back home. With an open mind to learn, some 300 recycling volunteers from 12 countries around the world are here in New Taipei City, Taiwan to visit various environmental education centers and what they witnessed left them thoroughly impressed. As Taiwan has more years of recycling experience, I can take their skills back home with me and implement these practices at our recycling stations in Malaysia. Taiwan senior recycling volunteers also share their experiences giving these volunteers from Cambodia who have not yet implemented recycling in their country a huge boost of confidence. I've always wanted to practice recycling back home, but there are many challenges hindering us. We don't have any experience, so we want to learn as much as we can here. But it all begins with courage and determination, so taking back what we have learned, we just need to do it with patience. The brothers told us that when they first started out, many recycling companies didn't want to collect their recyclables, so in the end, it just became trash. So first, we need to understand all the legal before we take the next step. Whether it is taking notes or through personal experience, these volunteers from abroad all hope to implement all that they have learned here back home. I can go back and share with others how to properly sort recyclables and how to further spread these environmental concepts into each household. Our master always tells us to play our part in safeguarding our planet, and I saw many elderly recycling bodhisattvas do just that. This is a new chapter in their life in retirement. The short yet fulfilling trip proved to be insightful for the 300 some volunteers and it is certain that upon returning home they will continue to be the guardians of our earth. In 1993, after a few college students attended a three-day seminar at the City Penang Liaison Office in Malaysia, the first teaching seminar in the nation was held the very next year. Today, 20 years on, some 100 cities have become certified city volunteers and citizens and are committed to spread cities' ideal far and wide. This is Li Zongfu, who is the administration director at the City Malaysia chapter. In year 2000, Li became a certified city volunteer, and his dharma name Ji Lang is there to always remind him not to forget where he started. 20 years ago, Li Zongfu and eight friends from University Technology Malaysia arrived at City's Penang Liaison Office to attend a three-day seminar. It was the same camp that inspired him to care for the sick and poor. After I visited care recipients with City volunteers, I vowed to become a part of City when I graduated from university. After I graduated, I went back to Penang, and the next thing I knew I was working in Ciji. The following year, Li Zongfu started working at Penang Liaison Office and had become the first Ciqing in Malaysia. Although Li had to build everything from scratch, he still managed to hold the first Ciqing camp in the country. Twenty years later, some 100 Ciqings have become full-fledged city volunteers. Zetosa 人群中，所以叫做狮子行菩萨道，这都是慈青的使命啊。This is Ang Lei Huan, who used to be a Ciqing and decided to work in Ciqi Foundation after graduation. However, her mother did not support her decision. Back then, I didn't know what to do. I knew that I made the right decision to work in Tsuji, but I felt I wasn't filial towards my mother because she was upset. I had to choose between the two, so I decided to talk to her about the Tsuji Foundation so she could understand my job better. 
Now 20 years on, this group of Zichings has become certified Ziji volunteers. In the years to come, they vow to continue shoulder Ziji's responsibility and inspire more people to walk the Ziji path. <laughs> To Taiwan, the Hualien City Hospital has held monthly community health day since 2010, where transportation was provided to seniors to receive health screenings at the hospital. Three years ago, Zhao Tai Yu participated in such an activity and was diagnosed with stage zero ovarian cancer. Zhao has since received treatment and made a full recovery, showing the importance of regular health checks. <laughs> Now, with plenty of energy, 65-year-old Zhao Caiyu moved from Taipei to Hualien and opened up a noodle stand with her younger sister. Healthy and able-bodied, illnesses rarely affected her. However, three years ago, when she participated in training, Zhao found out she had zero-stage ovarian cancer. <laughs> A group of elderly people line up and board a bus like they are heading out on a trip. However, their destination isn't a scenic spot. <laughs> yeah, it's like an outing. <laughs> we were just talking about how it seemed like we were going on a trip. <laughs> Creating a friendly atmosphere, the seniors' fear of visiting hospitals is reduced as they see the visit not about curing an illness, but about trying to maintain their sense of well-being. Coming here, it feels like a day tour. There is no pressure. It's enjoyable and the main focus is that it safeguards these seniors' health and gives these seniors a different view of the hospital. Since 2010, Hualien City Hospital has been cooperating with nearby communities to hold a monthly community health day. This time, the event brought in 40 seniors from the Minqin neighborhood. <laughs> Nursing staff and volunteers accompany the seniors during their height measurements, vision tests, blood tests, and x-ray exams. <laughs> If you don't ask them to come, the seniors won't visit on their own. We have a bus to pick them up and drop them off at our ninth floor preventative medicine department where they can get their health checked. Our services include adult and senior health checks, physical fitness checks, cancer screening, etc., all free of charge. In setting an example for others to follow, 89-year-old Tang Zhenghong, who has had two coronary stints placed, hopes other seniors can be aware of their health as well. Some elderly people don't like to find out too much about their health as they are not able to accept finding out they are sick. But for me personally, I like to get a better understanding of what's going on in my body. Discovering her cancer cells early on, Zhao Caiyu was able to receive treatment and recover. Now her follow-ups have studied at one per year. If we discover the cancer in pre-malignant stages, then the survival rate is most likely 100%. However, if the cells have turned cancerous, then the survival percentage depends on what stage it is found in. Patients should not wait until their body sends a warning to pay a visit to the hospital. Regular checkups and especially seniors' health screenings are a must for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. I'm glad there are health screenings as there are people like me who don't get their health checked very often. If I had waited another year or two, my cancer cells might have turned malignant. So I'm very thankful Tsuji has these activities and it's important for them to continue. Now that Zhao's life is back to normal, she continues to get up at 4 in the morning to prepare for work. If it wasn't for her health check three years ago, she might not be standing where she is today. 
to celebrate the Indonesian National Day here in Taiwan, New Taipei City Government and the Indonesia Economic and Trade Office to Taipei organized an Indonesian cultural festival at the Bantau Stadium, where city volunteers and team members also organized a free clinic to provide medical services to foreign workers. Sitting on the dental chair is Indonesian labor canary, who, despite working in Taiwan for several years, is seeing a doctor for the first time. I was told that Siji will hold a free clinic here. Siji's doctors will be here and I can see the doctor for free. Today is the first time I have seen a doctor here in Taiwan. Yes, I'm more relieved. To celebrate Indonesia's National Day, New Taipei City government organized an Indonesian cultural festival here at Banchal Stadium. City volunteers and members of Northern Tima set up a free clinic during the event to provide foreign laborers with health checkups and medical treatment. These doctors are very nice, they are polite and full of love. The health checkups are free, everything is free. Thank you, City. Thank you so much. These foreign laborers travel from miles away to make their living in Taiwan. It is good that we team our members are able to do something for them. In addition to foreign laborers, many foreign students and new immigrants are also seen in the venue. City volunteers' love and care helps alleviate their homesickness. I have a part-time job, so I am often too busy to see a doctor. It is actually too expensive to see a doctor for a foreign student like me. City provides us with free diagnosis and health checkups. City's events really helps us a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Tsuji's free clinic, these foreign residents finally have a chance to receive medical treatment, and the care and love from Tima members makes them feel like they are at home once again. The Taizong City Hospital, while receiving their medical evaluation, received the help of many city volunteers who were not only on hand to keep the environment clean, but also cooked hot meals for medical staff. To express their gratitude, the superintendent, Dr. Tian So Xing, led his staff in preparing a delicious meal for the volunteers. Switching from scrubs into aprons and putting down their surgical knife to hold a kitchen knife, doctors and nurses of Taichung City Hospital are cooking up a storm. I don't often cook, so I look like a newbie when chopping vegetables. For these staff members, it doesn't matter if they are familiar in the kitchen or not, each holds a grateful heart while helping out. I'm glad to be able to share this very meaningful event with others. Even the superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Jian Shouxin, has joined in, serving as the master chef of the kitchen, leading the rest of his team in providing a meal to thank the city volunteers for their tireless effort during the medical evaluation. It's like when we see patients, we see many patients. Every serving of the noodle, like every prescription, there's lots of love involved. During the evaluation period, volunteers served over 20,000 bowls of noodles as support and encouragement for the staff. Now that the hard work is over, the doctors and nurses have a chance to reciprocate by personally serving each volunteer. Really, we feel spoiled. It tastes really delicious and we even want another serving. Each bowl of noodles is filled with love and gratitude that can help but warm the hearts of volunteers. Next, we meet a young volunteer, Huang Shengkai, who despite being at the age of six, has already vowed to adopt to vegetarianism as part of his commitments to perform in the sign language musical of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings. Let's hear his story. My name is Huang Shengkai. I'm six years old. Now I'm a young volunteer at the Jin's Books and Cafe. Here I learn how to organize books and clean up the store. Despite being six, Huang Shengkai, in comparison to children at his age, is more mature and settled. Since his participation in last year's musical adaptation of the Sutra of Immeasurable Meanings, this little boy has learned to protect the environment through vegetarian. Veganism. 
我跟妈妈说，地球已经融化发烧了。Joining Huang Shengkai in going midless is his aunt, Zhuang Wenxin, a city volunteer who looks after him when his parents are at work, and often share Master Zheng Yan's words of wisdom to educate him the importance of going vegetarian. Through our interactions, he has gradually changed. He decided to eat 108 vegetarian meals for the preparation of the sutra performance this year. As well, he encourages his parents to go meatless. At each rehearsal, the little boy focuses on making his sign language movements perfect and learning words of the sutra of immeasurable meanings by heart. Despite his scholastic aptitude, Huang, however, used to worry his parents due to his quick temper. Shen Kai used to be a stubborn boy. He always insisted on getting whatever he wanted. However, after he joined as a young volunteer, over the past months, he has learned to control his temper and learn how to calm down and listen to other people. Now he has changed for the better and more willing to look after his younger sister and talk in a softer tone. To end this practice of the movements of the sign language musical, the Dharma Within has profoundly influenced the mind of this young volunteer and helped him change for the better. In Tainan, city volunteers held a blessing ceremony in honor of the seventh lunar month at Baoning Temple in Yongkang District. Participants included residents both young and old who all went away with a deeper understanding of the true meaning behind the Pudu Festival. Hoping to share the blessings with as many people as possible, city volunteers brave the rains as they go door to door to invite members of the public to the upcoming blessing ceremony. Participants are first treated to play in which volunteers encourage everyone to reflect on the cruelty and desire that lies behind a meat-based diet. One child himself, a vegetarian for six years, echoes the volunteers' call for action. Next participants watch a tale performed by a Taiwanese opera troupe in which the main proponent, a child, hopes to teach his parents to feel empathy for all sentient beings and refrain from taking their life. We should not harm other families and cause them loss for the sake of our own benefit or the rabbit in the story would not have a mother. That is what moved me the most. Hands and hearts held in prayer, these residents are not only experiencing the real meaning of Pudu, but also the right way to celebrate. Since Typhoon Alert was announced here in Taiwan, city volunteers and foundation staff all around the island were mobilized in preparation of the then coming storm. City volunteers in northern Taiwan set up a disaster command center in Taipei and ensured there are plenty of relief packs, instant rice and noodles, as well as water if needed. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.